Hey, it's Joe Glass, my automator, and today we're going to cover what we automated this last week with AutoHotKey. So let me uh, use Prompt Assistant, which I'll put the link up here. It's a tool for doing a lot of stuff, right? But, um, it's written in AutoHotKey, so I got here. I'm going to launch my recently modified HK files. This will go back one week to see what on anywhere under my Dropbox, which is really big, which is why it takes a little bit of time. Uh, what we automated this week, what we changed, uh, what auto hockey files we've changed this week. So 52 files, um, and let's just start burning through it here. So some we'll go into, some we'll just give you an idea of, you know, what we were doing. So this Kelly one, this is a client who, he, he's an accountant, and he had always been manually adjusting this data. And I have a different example here to show a very similar thing. It's, of course, he's he has privileged data, so I can't share his stuff, but I can show you something similar that we were doing to give you an idea of what we did for him. And uh, it's one of those things like if you have an Excel data file not structured in the way you want it to be, it's really easy with COM, the component object model from Microsoft. To It's just like using VBA, but without a hotkey, right? And we have an Excel function library, which makes it easier if you're not used to programming. But yeah, we, uh, we automated transforming his spreadsheet into um, really a flat file with one row is one data file, uh, one data, one, account record transaction, uh, breaking it out, doing reporting for him. So he was stoked, very stoked when we did that. Uh, actually, this one, so here's the one that I had before. Isaiah, like over a year, year and a half ago or so, um, let me show this Excel file because it's very similar to that other one. So I have these, this is done in SP set. Now this data is all made up, so it's not confidential. Um, and this is just from like a cross tab on using on age in this example across different questions, right? So we have the distribution. And then if I scroll down here, you'll see the significance, this significance testing, these green cells, which they happen to be green, they're all significant. That's not always the case. Correspond with this row. So this one with this one, this one with this one. And, and imagine if we had 30 of these together, how hard that would be to read, right? It'd be quite quite hard. And let me scroll down here. You'll see they're not always significant. So so again, you're like, oh, was there a difference across fresh? Um, no, that's the first one. Was there a difference across fast? Well, not, I have to keep trying to jump between these two. And it's really hard, right? So let me launch our tool. So this is for a single worksheet. Now, when I hit my hotkey, okay, so it was running. It's just as Ace had changed it to F1, which um, he was testing some stuff. And we made some changes to it. And then this is mine up here. So that's why I was hitting the hotkey. It wasn't working. I'm going to relaunch it now and come back into here. And now, again, we scroll down. Um, these these are all here. And anyway, let's. I'm going to hit the hotkey. And you see it's kind of noticeable. But it, uh, there, it fixed two two tables, right? The other one takes 22, takes a little bit of time. But now check this out. Now these significance tables are right in line with the data here. And we scroll down. It also deleted that data that was beneath it. So here, now see how easy it is? I can look right up. Oh, hey, there's nothing significantly different here um, or here or here. But these green ones, they pop out. They're bigger font um, in green. So that's, now, let me show you. Let me get a screenshot of this. Here, let's move this a little. Right, now let's come to the next one. Just so you get an idea here. Again, let's we'll roll down to one of those. Notice this ANOVA table. That's the statistical table, that the computation table. I'm doing a test between these to see if there's a difference. Because we do sampling, you have to check for... Um, if there's if the F value or the P value is high enough, this is the P. It's, it says SIG, but it's the P value, P score. Um, so anyway, you get the idea, right? Like it's really helpful. Imagine again, um, this entire thing built with these, and how much time it takes. Where sometimes there's you know 15 of these in a row, and then they have like tw on that other spreadsheet, I have 23 tables all put together. So again, I can hit my hotkey, and it goes and updates them all, tweaks them, cleans it up, bam. So let me, now, that was this one. Now, what we did, um, by the way, this week for this script is, let me go back into that, actually, let me exit. I'm exiting right now. So I exited that one. Let me open this folder. I'll just launch it from Prompt Assistant. Hopefully that'll work fine. 
um, multiple worksheets. So now I'm going to go back into Excel and hopefully um, I should open that script to see. Because I, I think we changed the hotkey to be my hotkey because we worked with this. Now, uh, you see, in that other file I was talking about, I had like 30 different tabs. So age, income, gender, and then basically every question in the study you'd want to see it by. So I had to go to each one, hit the hotkey, wait about a minute for it to be done, click the next one, activate it. And I did that because sometimes we were getting errors. It, it wasn't often, but it, this is really, really important. Um, the client, the the real client, the guy I'm working for is the real supplier. So I'm, he's outsourced some of the stuff to me. Um, he, I'm sure is making, uh, you know, not, I shouldn't say that, but the, it's, I'm sure the study is at least like $50,000 at least, right? Probably more. But now I can hit a hotkey. You hear a sound. It started working on age, finished age, goes to the next one, income, finish that one, gen. Now see, this doesn't, we don't need these because they're so fast because these are short and the other one. And then it says, Hey, six tables in total. Um, that last one should be a little bit longer, but you get the idea, right? Um, very simple. Let me also move over my taskbar and show you one other thing that we did. Um, and I'll rerun it. See this green? This means like, hey, you're good to go. Again, the other one, it takes a good 30 seconds for it to work in a worksheet. So what I do is I, I notify myself. Um, and you know, what? while we're in there, let's do this. Let's edit this. And that last notification, the very final one, should be not there. There we go. So we got the sound beeps going on, which I honestly don't need anymore. But um, time, it's that's not up for four seconds. So this is the V1 notify that Maestrith built um, a long time ago. But I don't think that doesn't feel like it's up for four seconds. Let's change it to eight eight seconds so i'm going to relaunch it come back in here um and now what you're going to notice though is on each worksheet this is going to change to red meaning it's still working but it, it happened so fast i probably should put a sleep in there in between there but they see it turned to red then it turns well it because it's still processing it doesn't turn back to green until it's done and then in the, when it's finally done there we go now we're back to green Oh, no, that's still, that doesn't seem like eight seconds. But this is how I can use my status bar system tray icon to notify me like the status of the program. So that's pretty cool. So that was one of the things we worked on. Um, it's pretty cool now because I, I can save a ton of time on that. So this these are those two, the HK forum. So Rizwan, um, he's new on the team. He was going to, let's go to the auto hockey forum. And that's my forum link. Yeah. So he went to the scripts and functions forum and we're getting um, basically everything you see, almost everything you see here. So there's the, what in the scripts and functions for V2, the title of the post, the author, when they first originally posted it and the number of, I think that's the view uh, replies, number of views, um, I think that's it. Yeah. But we loop across every page. I think there's 20 pages or so. So we're going to be looking at to see, hey, is there a new function out there? Is new script that's really cool that we should be aware of, right? That'll help with the newsletter. Um, and then today I said, hey, let's add to that a little bit. Let's go back to here to the, and let's go to the V1 forum to the scripts and functions. So this one, you can see there's a lot more content, of course, because it's V1, 120 pages. So we're going to scrape off both of those, dump them into a file. It'll also help us understand, hey, what's in V2 that's really popular that's not in V1? Maybe that's something we should create, right? So that'll be a cool little thing that we're working on. I mean, he's using Refidium. I'll put the link in the thing here. Um, the Refidium version 2, um, I just talked to Irving this morning about it. He's going to make some videos to help get you started on it. Um, it's, it's a great way to web scrape as long as you can download a driver, an EXE file. Uh, then it's a great solution for you. Very robust for using AutoHotKey. If you can't, then you might use like either AutoControl um, or UIA for simple stuff. But if you're doing more robust stuff, it's a great solution. All right. So anyway, um, the YouTube API. Isaiah has been working on our YouTube search tool, which um, let's see if I can navigate to that. Oh, I, duh, I'm an idiot. I can navigate to it right here. Um, oh, but actually this one is, 
this is where we're pulling them from. I don't know that. Yeah, that's the pulling it. We're building it where we can go loop across everyone's channels. So we have, we're going to grab Hellbent's subtitles and um, Axel Fulber and, you know, a lot of well-known auto hockey channels and shove them all into our tool. And let's see, that's under YouTube. So that I think our, our tool, which I know is later on our list, but let's jump to it now. It's YouTube, YouTube. Subtitle search. That sounds good. Now, this tool, as Ace has been working on, and it's coming along real well. It uses the database. So I can search, let's say, mouse. And it searches across a lot, a lot of, you know, I have roughly 1,400 videos. We have 1,400 videos on our channel. Um, and then you can pick one. And then it shows you, hey, in the description, here's where mouse is mentioned. And here are parts of the subtitles with the timestamp. And if I click this, we'll see how it was mentioned. And then you can double click this and it will go to that time at that video for you, right? I think it backs up a couple seconds. So yeah, pretty cool. Now this thing, because we're going to have to keep that database updated um, and constantly adding to it, it's going to be a subscription, but it'll be like $3 a month. So it's, I, to me, quite reasonable. Um, and then we're going to have to create a separate version for the hero members because we have every week we have three hours of calls and those are also on YouTube, but they're unlisted. And so for hero members, they can go watch them. And so we have what, what, what in the world is three hours a week times what, like two years. I mean, it's, it's a lot of hours, right? So they, they have a lot more content that they'll have access to, but I think there's a pretty slick little tool um, also, if there's a URL, you can it'll be up here, and you can click it. It'll take you to the um, the, the page straight away, uh, and also highlights them here. But yeah, we're we're pretty excited about the tool. Also, we're adding um, here's the the number of views, likes, uh, comments. Sorry, I'm blank on that one. Uh, I don't know what count is. Here's a count. Oh, how many times that word appeared in the thing, um, and. Yeah, we're going to make this where this is also a great way to be able to build some metrics to see what's actually working, right? To find more popular videos um, and see number by number of views and stuff, right? What what this is. So in the long run, we're going to use this for other YouTube channels. Not auto, auto hockey is, you know, we love it, but it's very niche. Uh, imagine creating this for like a Python channel or a cooking channel or something that has millions of viewers. Uh, I think it'll be really cool to allow subscribers to be able to find things even because right now YouTube doesn't search your subtitles and our tools going to allow you to do that. So that's pretty freaking cool. That, by the way, that edit, the green you were seeing in there, that's a class that um, I think maybe just me wrote in V2 for being able to use RTF, rich text format. So that's pretty slick. All right, let's get back into our recent uh, clip share. We're working on a version of clip. Clip share allows me to hit a hotkey and like other people on my team can paste and they can get that text or a file wherever they are. So that's pretty cool. We also can use it to send messages to each other. And so we're converting that into a tool that we can basically share with other people. Right now, it's highly customized for our team and what we do, but we're making it where it's independent of that. So anybody could get it um, and use it as long as you have a network drive or a, a cloud drive or something that's synced. Uh, let's see. Here's why I'll do some more stuff here. He's still working on that tool and here final search get get active path this tool we're really close to and I, although I just today noticed another little bug with it um, but what's really cool is I can be in almost any program like if I'm an Explorer and I hit control shift C all right so I've figured out what was going on I had some weird window that was popping up anyway on this um get active path it's really cool so you can be in a lot of different programs let's say I'm in studio and I want the path to this file. I can hit control shift C and it gets the path to that file. Or if I'm in site and I hit control shift C, as long as I have a file that's actually open, let's see, I don't want that one. Um, this one's fine. Control shift C gets me that active path and displays it here, but it also shoves it into my clipboard. If I'm in VS code and I have a file open, oh, same happens to be same file, control shift C gets it reliably, right? But here, but wait, there's more. If I'm in Chrome and I don't have text selected and I hit Control Shift C, it gets the URL 
However, if I do have text selected and I hit control shift C, it builds the hyperlink. So it takes this text, looks at the URL and then builds it in a way that I can go into like Word. And here actually, this is the bug. Hopefully this worked. This is the bug. No, it worked this time. Good. Um, that I I, did, I reported a little while ago to Irfan because um, I have a different hotkey for a different script that does this, but we incorporated it into Get Active Path because it it kind of fits right. It goes really well. So um, yeah, we we have we've added a lot of programs. Let me see if um, and now actually we added a couple more this morning. Let's see if um, in Notepad this is how it's supposed to work. If I'm in Notepad and I say File Open. And I, I have a path here and I hit control shift C. Oh, he said it was updated, but it's not getting it. It should have gotten that path as I thought he said he had finished that. Let's try this one. Nope, not getting it. Um, that's okay. And then also like in Grepwin, if I have Grepwin open and I have files here, if I hit if I do several, control shift C, it gets the paths that are selected, right? So we added that in our my file X search. I use that one too. We're also probably going to add that to everywhere or everything, everything, right? Um, so that'll be a cool tool. But yeah, it's it's really cool because inside Word, if I if you're looking at a Word file, um, let's do, here was the last newsletter. And I hit, getting this path, getting that path, even though we can see the file name, getting that path is not easy. So I can hit Control Shift C, and what? Oh, that's funny. Somehow Repwin is still okay. Now I get to report another bug. Uh, the the joys of let me try to reload this thing. Why? That does not make any sense because Repwin is not open. Maybe it's that there's more than one word file open. Yeah, this was working great. And then we added that new, which is always, you add new functionality and you add new bugs, right? It's the way it is. Um, yeah, that should have worked great. Um, let me see if in Excel for some reason, but you get the idea, right? It'll it'll copy the path. There we go. So it worked for that. I don't know why for Word it's not working. Yeah. Program is in a dialog is not in a dialog box though. Yeah, so we'll have to let him know. He, oh, I know he was. They were adding some stuff to say, hey, if if I have like something like um, Control D, I think, if this is up, you can't access that object. So they added some checking. However, I'm not. I don't have one of those open, and I'm getting that that error. That's the error they put about having a dialog box open. Um, also, if there's the the. When you download a file from the internet for the office programs, they get you that, you know, you got to click it to get into there. So we programmed around that as well. But um, obviously we introduced some new bugs there. So joys, uh, which is why we haven't released it. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, UIA. I didn't know. Get back to it. So we were adding something with UIA there. Uh, the DPI scaling. I, I'm not, I think they were, I don't surprise, surprise they made a change there. I thought we were just looking at the examples there. Rizwan was adding some, we borrowed from it. Um, newsletter, this one yesterday, is Ice and I were on here for a couple hours. We're adding some stuff to our newsletter and how it works in the database. So that, creative search and replace. Um, I added our new course into the banner. So let me show you how that works. Let me, um, actually I had the Word doc open earlier. And let's say I'm, I'm I'm telling you, this is the newsletter, right? And if you notice this right here, this course, this right here, this is in my template. So when I copy, let's just do this part right here. I'm going to copy this. I go to my page where I paste the Word stuff. Now, then I launch, and this is still, do I have it in? I don't know if I put it in a prompt system yet. Word, no, I don't see it yet, which means I have to launch the from prompt assistant, search and replace. So see this course banner with the, the P's? So I just took into account that is always what that gets translated to inside this tool. So when I hit my hotkey, it grabs all that, looks for, let's go edit that script. Because it's very simple, but it's a cool little approach when you know something's going to be in a certain way. 
So here I'm just creating a variable that says course banner equals this. This is my variable. This is my HTML banner. Um, and then I just loop over things and say, hey, see here it is here. When you find that, replace that with the course banner, the variables. So I'm just replacing the HTML, which is how in here it dumped in this HTML banner for me. And I had added, we had our new course, the Rise Above PC Incompetence. So this is not about auto hotkey. It's just how to use a computer more efficiently, right? So anyway, um, it's a great thing. It saves me every week I use this and I don't have to do that. There's one at the bottom as well. And there's other stuff um, that's in it that you can see in here. I have uh, several things defined. So I haven't done it recently because John and I, he's just been busy. We haven't caught up. I haven't seen any updates for a quick access pop-up. Um, we have our HK Hero stuff, the newsletter share, the bottom banner. Um, so yeah, it's a great simple way. And then I also, I like seeing in here, having a nice easy spot to see the difference between the sections. So when um, when there's an H3 in here, it'll put double line returns, so it's easier to read. Like that's why here there's a big break, right? And this tool itself deletes those over time and see it disappear. So every time I hit this, it throws them back in. So it's easy to read, which is just, it's stupid. I wrote the author. He's, he's uh, been receptive to some changes. He says he can't change that. And so I just fixed it my way, right? So yeah, that's that script. So we updated that. That list manager, that's still the newsletter stuff, run Windows app. Uh, I did a video on this. It should be out soon, but it's very simple to run Windows apps with when you have this function. And we talked about that in the hero group the other day too, of like, Microsoft made it so hard to run Windows apps if you don't know what you're doing. It's ridiculous. Um, we also talked where um, Irfan is working on this add to startup. Um, well, it's a scheduler template that will easily make it very easy for you to add um, scripts to the task manager um, without having really complicated stuff to do it. So programmatically doing it without having to manually do it. You just pick a few things. Uh, the messages, I'm not sure what Telegram, what? oh, uh, that's our, our Telegram reminder, which I got to fix that, the spelling of it, um, but it uh, it automatically reminds people an hour before the hero call and 50, 30 minutes before, and then I think 15 to 5 minutes, the 15 to 5 minute warnings gives the Zoom link in it, so you can just click it and join the meeting, which is really cool. Um, yeah, the auto suggestion, this has come along, let me launch the script. Oh, that's the folder. Um, I don't know if that's the current one. Yeah, I think this is the current one. Now we have the MRU, so it'll search your most recently. And you can you can enable or disable the MRU lists. Um, that's for global, but then I can pick and choose on uh, which ones I want to have. So if I want it to look at my open and save dialogues, it's really convenient because it will automatically look in there. But let's just for now, let's pick um, SPSS variables. That's that other data file, which the variable names won't help you at all. But I'm going to turn that on and say, suggest after every three characters I type. And let me go into, so think of auto assist. So Q12, oh, hey, here are all the things that have a Q and a one and a two somewhere in there. So in here, there's a Q1 and then there was a two over here. This one has the Q12, this one has a one and somewhere in here has a two. So it's an ordered list. So it's sort of a fuzzy match. But you can select it, and then it dumps in. Um, you hit enter; it'll dump in that text. So that's the auto suggester, right? It'll be suggesting, but it, it looks across uh, very easy to use. So, um, and you can easily add to it. We we're getting really close on this one too. We just keep noticing little things, getting it to work quite exactly where we want it to. But it's it's very close. Um, so we made some good headway on that one. Adding that MRU. Um, the only other thing, the another one, and I don't know if we'll embed it, this one or have it as a separate tool, is to watch your clipboard. And so you can enable or disable watching the clipboard. And so text that you had in your clipboard, I would love to be able to to have it monitor my clipboard and offer things up that were in my clipboard. You know, maybe even just limited, like, hey, for the last hour, for the last day, last week, last month, right? You can choose how recently you want it to do it because. Um, some often you copy stuff there and then you want it again, but it's hard to find, right? And you got to go look, hunt and peck with the Windows V and go find it in here somewhere. And you, you know, like this should have a search. Like, I don't know why it doesn't. And then there's other stuff. I just want to be able to start typing and have it 
you know, scan that for me. So that's basically what that'll be. Um, so yeah, so that's coming along. Um, these are all on the auto suggester stuff. Subtitle search, as I said, we're using the API to go pull subtitles. Um, no, to get the list of channel of videos and the number of likes and views from channels. And then we use an extension because the subtitles quote unquote cost too much to be pulling ourselves. But I told this Irfan, let's look at it and see what it actually would cost. Most channels have like two, 300 videos. Ours is really big compared to most channels, right? But um, most channels have like 300 videos. And even though it takes 200 credits on the YouTube API, you get 10,000 a day. And on our channel, we burn through them pretty fast, but other channels, it wouldn't be a lot. And even then it's, you know, it might be like a dollar or something to rip a channel. And right now we're using Refadium, but I mentioned earlier for looping over every video and scraping it and stuff. And it's just time consuming. And this, the API would blaze through them. So we're going to look at the pricing on that. Um, Hero call notifier. We actually released a script to give to Hero members. It's on the automator. If you want to, even if you're not a Hero member, you can check it out because it's cool. You can edit it easily to say, oh, I want it to go at this time of day or you know, twice a week or something. It's very easy to adjust. So that's a cool one. Um, Thomas, our cl client, he, he's he's got a good sense of humor. And he was, uh, he asked us to, you know, he's like, I'll pay you guys. I want you guys to look for this bug. And I think in this, Isaiah's in a couple minutes found, he's like, I think that's actually an auto hotkey bug. So he submitted it to um, Luxicos on, on the forum saying, hey, we, you know, we think this is a bug, but um, Thomas was laughing because um, it was just so fast, right? We're not charging the client for something that takes a couple minutes. But yeah, that was cool to figure that out, at least to identify it. This is my main script, um, the Excel array test. I think we were playing with um, that script I mentioned for Kelly, the client. Um, we had a lot of data and, and we were testing different ways to insert that data as an array versus um, looping over the cells versus just pasting and to see which one was fastest, just so it was you know, working smooth. Uh, get path, open, save dialog. So I think I was playing with some from there. Uh, this is my one that I'm actually ripping stuff out of to put in the other tools. Uh, this is still my hot strings list and my default ones, which I can't believe I still have that. And I am slowly switching over to V2. This, let me let me close this now and show you. Um, it's a download we have on the automator. I just right now don't um, recommend it because I've had it crash and I don't want um, people to be worried about it. But if, if I click this button, it's going to launch Studio that it's written in and for V1 of AutoHotKey. Now, I can't just click this because Studio says, oh, you're already open and it just leaves this open. But I need to close this. If I click this icon... We have a, a version of Studio that Isaiah and I wrote with a little bit of help from Astrieth that has the V2 launcher as well as the IntelliSense with the words for V2, but it's not written in V2. Um, it just allows you to program in V2, doesn't warn you that it's not a V2 script. Um, here you can see this is a V2 script. Uh, I can launch it from within Studio, which is great. I just had it crash on me a couple times, and we figured out it has something to do with the highlighting and there's when something gets highlighted a certain way, it would crash. And I haven't had it happen as much as I as I did before, but we'll we'll see. Um, but until I figure out why, because it, it's a real bummer when you lose your work, right? Studio doesn't save it ongoing, so you'd have to save it yourself. Because if it just crashes, you lose whatever you didn't save, right? There's no auto. I don't think there's an auto save time, you know, setting. <laughs> but yeah, that's what we've automated this week. With Auto Hotkey, thanks for watching. Um, we try to do these videos once a week-ish. Uh, just depends on how much we got going on. And thanks for being here. Please like the video if you learned something here. It really helps on our channel. Have a great day. Cheers.